This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hi, statistician community. I'm Trevis Nicolas, a French game art student specialized in real-time VFX. In this video, we're going to talk about my latest effect, a stylized version of the Ignis sign from the game The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We'll start by quickly talking about my thought process during the concept phase, then we'll focus on the technical breakdown of the effect, where we'll talk about texturing, shader logic, and 3D modelization. The software I use to achieve this effect are Autodesk Maya, Adobe Photoshop, Unity Engine, and Amplify Shader Editor. Feel free to use any similar softwares. I wanted to redesign the Ignis sign as a stylized MOBA spell. I had to rethink of important elements such as structure, camera view, and artistic direction. Setting those directives lines helped me a lot, gave me a path to follow with clear intention from the beginning to the end of the project. So here's the original Ignis sign. I had to comprehend the original VFX structure by isolating important components and understanding what element left a strong impression on player's mind. In Ignis case, we can list um, as main elements the pews of ashes and the fire blast, as secondary element the ignite effect when enemies are hit by the spell, and finally come small subtle elements such as smoke and distortion. With a clearer understanding of the effect, I had a more precise idea of what I wanted the new effect to look like. So I gather multiple artistical references coming from game, illustration, and graphic design. I also took some references from real life and some technical documentation. My VFX concept art serves as a global overview of the effect. I try to give a lot of information about every VFX artistic principles, such as gameplay, shape, value, color, and timing. I highly recommend to watch uh, Artistic Principles of VFX, a uh, video series by Jason Kaiser. He helped me a lot to conceptualize VFX while thinking of all those key elements. So here's the final concept art, with a lot of personal notes, and I'm going to show you some of the main guidelines that help me during the concept art painting. I wanted an easily readable effective range with some anticipation to allow players to dodge the spell if they were reactive enough. Some visual feedbacks when players take damage and are under the ignite effect. And from an artistical standpoint, I reserved high values for damage and lower values for particle and range to be more solid. I also use a lot of dark color to have better contrast. And with this done, we can finally take a look at the technical breakdown of the effect. We split the effect into four parts, and for each part, we are going to take a closer look at interesting elements, showing you how are they made, and showing some tips and tricks to achieve a similar result. So first let's take a look at the range indicator element. We'll talk about some texture optimization, the logic behind the ramping opacity mask, and how I fake the heat distortion effect at a very cheap cost. One easy thing to do when it comes to texture optimization is to actually group texture. With only one RGB texture, I actually have three usable grayscale texture. For the price of just one texture core, we can have 
up to four different textures using the red, green, blue and alpha channel. It's simple and very effective. For the range indicator opacity mask, we'll use a noise texture and the texture coordinate of our plane. We'll take our texture coordinate V output and invert it, giving us a nice inverted gradient. Then we'll subtract it to our noisy texture on which we already applied a linear gradient on it. We will then subtract the result with our texture coordinate V gradient and with the smooth step function and a float value we can now control our mask from top to bottom. However, we'll need to control our mask from both sides. To do so, we will just duplicate our mask controller and invert some of the old components and with that done, we can now control our mask from bottom to top. And by multiplying our two controller and with some fine tuning, our opacity mask can now have multiple ways of wrapping up. When it comes to its distortion, what I like to do is to directly make it in my UV's texture. And to do so, I need some noisy texture and my texture coordinate from the plane. We'll start the effect by making the texture move with the panel function. Then we will add it to our texture coordinates and this will give us some nice UV distortion. As you can see, it's cheap, effective and very easy to do. With the energy accumulation effect, we'll dive into 2D texturing for the fire texture and 3D modelization to make the aura mesh. My process for the fire texturing went a bit like this. I tried to find good shape while staying rough with the art brush. I used a special Photoshop filter called Dust and Scratches to kind of blend it all together and lose a bit of sharpness and refine my shapes. I make it tileable and apply a smart sharpen and then I duplicate the layer apply a Gaussian blur effect and set the fusion mode to screen. Concerning the fire aura, we'll need a tiling texture, just like the one we did before, and a special 3D mesh. To make our fire aura mesh, we'll take the top of a cylinder and apply a special linear UV unwrap on it. We will make our texture move alongside our UVs and depending on how you make them move, you can achieve all kinds of different auras on it. Within the fire blast effect, we have two interesting elements to analyze. We have first the fire burst mesh and the fire burst shader. For the burst mesh, we'll need a noisy texture, a tiling fiery texture like we did for the energy accumulation aura, and a special 3D mesh. We'll make a 3D plane with the shape of our choice and we'll have a special linear UV unwrap with UV distortion at the top and at the bottom of it. We'll make the texture move alongside our UVs and this way we'll have a 3D mesh with texture distortion directly set up in our UVs. We are now going to make a passive moving opacity mask on our flame burst effect. We'll first do this by taking our noisy texture and make it move. We'll then, thanks to the smooth step function, make a mask of it. We'll multiply the result with our painting texture. And this will give us the base opacity mask for our mesh. And if we add the opacity mask from the range indicator that we saw a bit earlier on the presentation, on top of a passive one, this will allow us to simulate the burst part of the effect. To end this presentation, we'll talk about the ignite effect and especially the particle dissolve part. To achieve it, we'll need a sprite sheet and a noisy texture. So for the particle dissolve, we use the UV distortion technique we just saw earlier in the presentation and we will add this to the flying spreadsheet. Combine this with a smooth step function and we'll have a very nice fading out particles over the lifetime. 
it's quite easy to do and add a lot of movement in your particles. Thank you for your attention. I hope you liked the presentation as much as I enjoyed making it. I personally wanted to thank Thomas Elliot Smith, the creator of Starlight Station, who gave me the opportunity to make this breakdown video. And if you want a place to learn more about VFX and have feedbacks on your effect, I only encourage you to go and check out Real Time VFX Forum. If you liked the effect, it was only the first step in my VFX redesign project. The rest of the sign will be released soon. So be sure to follow me on ArtStation to not miss them. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Goodbye and stay safe, people. Mm -hmm.